Lesson 6.2c, Writing and Solving One-Step Multiplication and Division Equations. We can use unit analysis to help us write an equation that'll properly fit a given problem. Unit analysis means using the rules of multiplying and reducing fractions to solve problems involving different units. So here's an example. It says the rope is three and five tenths feet long and it wants us to give its length in inches, so we would need to convert the feet to inches. Here's another example. The temperature increases 30 degrees per hour. What is the increase per minute? So we need to switch it from hours to minute. Temperatures can be both positive and negative, and they can increase or decrease during a given period of time. A decrease in temperature is represented by a negative number. An increase in temperature is represented by a positive number. To solve one-step multiplication and division equations, we're going to have to use inverse operations. And I want you to remember that a reciprocal is like a flipped upside-down version of a fraction. So if we multiply this numerator to the numerator of its reciprocal, we'll get a 2. And if we multiply the denominator times the denominator of the reciprocal, we'll get a 2. And we'll have 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So when we multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, it should equal 1. Between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., the temperature decreases an average of 2 thirds of a degree per hour. How many minutes will it take for the temperature to decrease by 3 degrees Fahrenheit? So notice that it's telling us that it's 2 thirds of a degree per hour, but it wants to know the answer in minutes. First thing we do is write an equation. We're going to let x represent the number of hours it takes for the temperature to decrease by 3 degrees Fahrenheit. We write negative 2 thirds, because it's a decrease, we're going to have a negative 2 thirds, x is equal to negative 3, because that's a decrease of 3 degrees. Next thing we do is we solve the equation using an inverse operation. We want to isolate x to one side of this equation, so we need to get rid of this negative 2 thirds by multiplying both sides by its reciprocal. And the flipped upside down version of it, and it's going to be negative, is a negative 3 over a 2. We flipped it around and kept that negative sign. Multiply both sides by negative 3 halves. Here we have a negative times a negative, and we have 3 times 2, so it's going to be a positive 6. And here we have 2 times 3, which is 6. Negative times negative makes a positive. So we have 6 over 6, the same numerator and denominator. That means we have 1x, but we don't have to write that 1. We multiply this side by negative 3 halves, and we can even think of this as a negative 3 over a 1, so we can multiply straight across. We have negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9, and a 1 times 2, which is a 2. We have x is equal to 9 halves hours. So now we have x is equal to 9 halves hours. The next thing we do is convert the number of hours to minutes. We have 9 half hours, and we're going to multiply that to 60 minutes over 1 hour. 9 times 60 is equal to 540, and 2 times 1 is equal to 2. We have 540 over 2 minutes. 540 divided by 2, which is 270 minutes. We know x is equal to 270 minutes for the temperature to decrease by 3 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can check it. 9 divided by 2 hours, 9 halves hours, is equal to 4 and a half hours. 2 goes into 9 4 times with a half left over it. We have 4 and a half hours. And 4 and a half hours would be 4 hours 30 minutes, because 30 minutes is a half hour, isn't it? And there's 60 minutes in an hour, so 4 hours times 60 minutes is 240 minutes, plus that 30 minutes is 270 minutes. So yes, we did it correctly. 
We can also check it by dividing this 270 by 60 minutes in an hour, and using long division, we see that it is 4.5 hours. So yes, we did it correctly. A hot air balloon begins its descent at the rate of 18 and one fourth feet per minute. How long will it take for the balloon's elevation to change by negative 219 feet? We write our equation. Because it's a descent, we're going to have negative 18 and one fourth x, and that's going to be equal to a negative 219. We can solve this equation using division as an inverse operation. We'll divide both sides of the equation by a negative 18.25, because 0.25 is the same thing as 1 fourth, isn't it? We can just change it to a decimal. So now, since we know that negative 18 and 1 fourth is equal to negative 18.25, we have our equation written as negative 18 and 25 hundredths x is equal to negative 219. We divide both sides by negative 18 and 25 hundredths. We have the same numerator and denominator, so this makes a giant 1. We have 1x, but we don't have to write that 1, do we? And on this side, we have negative 219 divided by negative 18 and 25 hundredths. That comes out to 12. We know x is equal to 12 minutes for the elevation to change by negative 219 feet. The value of a share of stock decreases in value at a rate of $1.40 per hour during the first four and five tenths hours. That's four and a half hours of trading. It's telling us to write and solve an equation to find the decrease in value of the share of stock during that time. So it's during this four and a half hours. We can write N divided by four and five tenths is equal to a negative 1.4. We can take off the dollar sign and this zero, and because it's a decrease, we know it's a negative, and we can just write it as a negative 1.4. We need to isolate this n to one side of the equation using an inverse operation. Now, I want you to keep in mind, you're going to see this more as you get into algebra, this n divided by the 4.5 we know that there's like an invisible one here, isn't there? So it's really 1n divided by 4.5. We can also take this variable n and put it on the side and say 1 over 4.5n. These are all the same thing. They can be written in all these different ways. So n over 4.5 can also be written as 1 over 4.5n. If we write it that way, we can divide both sides by the reciprocal of 1 over 4.5 as 4.5 over 1. We can multiply this side by that reciprocal, and we can multiply this side by that reciprocal. We're going to get 4.5 over 4.5, which is the same numerator and denominator, so we're actually going to have a 1n on this side. On this side, when we multiply negative 1.4 times 4.5 for the numerator and then 1 times 1 for the denominator, we're going to have n on the left side of the equation and a negative 6 and 3 tenths over 1 on the right side. We can write this as negative 6 and 3 tenths, and because we're looking for a decrease, we can take this negative sign off and just write that n is equal to $6.30 decrease in value of the stock. We just put this back as money with a dollar sign and the zero in the cents place. Now, we need to understand how to use inverse operations, but this problem can also be solved using cross products. We've talked about them before when we were talking about proportions. If we have n over 4.5 and we know it's equal to a negative $1.40, we can write this negative $1.40 over a 1, can't we? Now, what we do is we say this denominator, we cross over up to this numerator and multiply them. Whatever this product 
should equal is what this product will equal. If we do 4.5 times a negative $1.40, or we could say a negative 1.4, it should equal 1n. We don't have to write this one, so it should just equal n. When we do 4.5 times negative 1.4, we get a negative 6.3. We know it's supposed to be money. We're looking for a decrease. So we could say it's a negative $6.30. It's a decrease in value of $6.30. So do you see how I did cross products? We wrote our equation and whatever 4.5 times this negative $1.40, whatever that was equal to, that means this 1n should be equal to negative 6.3. And if that's a 1, that means n must be negative 6.3. And because it's money, it's a negative $6.30. It's telling us to solve using an inverse operation. We see 4 and 7 tenths p is equal to 23 and 5 tenths. Well, 4 and 7 tenths p, this means 4 and 7 tenths times some number p. That's multiplication. So we can use division as the inverse operation. We divide both sides of this equation, both sides of the equal sign, by 4 and 7 tenths. This has the same numerator and denominator, so it's just a 1. It's 1p, but we don't have to write the 1. And on this side, we find it's equal to 5. We've isolated p to one side of the equal sign. We know p is equal to 5. Now here we have 3 fourths n is equal to 6. And again, when the 3 fourths is next to the variable, when the coefficient of n is 3 fourths, we're multiplying. But because this is a fraction, it would be very easy to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the fraction. So even though this is multiplication, we can use multiplying by the reciprocal as an inverse operation, we get 12 twelfths n, same numerator and denominator. So really, that's like a 1n, but we don't have to write the 1. And on this side, we get 24 over 3. And when we simplify this, we get an 8. We know n is equal to 8. We're finished with 6.2, and we're going to move on to 6.3, which is about writing two-step equations. We're going to be modeling two-step equations next. So we can solve one-step addition and subtraction equations by using an inverse operation, and we can solve one-step multiplication and division equations by using an inverse operation, and that inverse operation is the opposite operation. If we see its multiplication in the equation, we can try using division. But keep in mind that when it is like over here, and we have a fraction, we can still use multiplication instead of division by multiplying by the reciprocal. All we're trying to do is isolate that variable to one side of the equal sign to find what its value is. Have a wonderful day, and I hope you'll join me for 6.3. Bye.